Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is now 5.30, and I will call this regular meeting of the Burnsville City Council to order. It is our tradition to stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and we invite you to join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's meeting is being conducted both in person and online. Um, council members are all present uh, in the chambers as well as our staff. Members of the public may attend in person, or uh, the public can also watch this meeting online at burnsvillemn.gov slash meetings or Comcast channel 16 or 859. The public can also uh, participate through Zoom by joining us at zoom.us slash join. More information is available on our meeting webpage and in the council agenda packet. The next item on our agenda is announcements. And uh, our announcements have to do with all of our upcoming meetings. Our regular meetings are scheduled for Tuesday, February 21st at 5.30 p.m. and Tuesday, March 7th at 5.30 p.m. We have a work session that's scheduled for Tuesday, February 14th at 5.30 p.m. Unless noted, all meetings of the council are held here in the council chambers. The next item on the agenda is citizens' comments. This is the opportunity for anyone uh, in the audience to address the council on an item that is not on the printed agenda and not an application form that will be coming before us at a future date. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council? Anyone? Mrs. Collins, is there anyone on Zoom? No. No one online, Matthew. Thank you. We then will move on. The next item on the agenda is additions to the final agenda. And this is for emergency items only. City Manager Lindbergh, are there any emergency items to come before the body? Nothing from Staff Mayor. Thank you. Members of the Council. OK, thank you. We now move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a group of items that's considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. However, an item on a consent agenda can be removed for a separate discussion and vote. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes an item on a consent agenda to be removed for a separate discussion and vote? Mrs. Collins, anyone on Zoom? No one, Madam Mayor. Okay. City Manager Lindbergh, does staff have an item to be pulled? Nothing from staff, Mayor. Members of the Council? Nothing. Thank you. May I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda, please? Move to approve. Second. There is a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And the motion carries. Thank you. We now move on to the regular agenda. And the first item on the regular agenda is a public hearing. And um, this is about... Um, the resolution to order the improvements uh, and uh, approve the plans and specifications and ordering advertisement for bids for the 2023 street improvement project. And presenting this uh, evening is our assistant city engineer, Mr. Logan Velocity. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. My computer just turned off on me. <coughs> All right. Madam Mayor and members of the council, tonight I'll be presenting the 2023 Street Improvement Project. This is our map of our proposed street improvements. In red is our reclamation areas. In blue is our rehabilitation areas, which are generally our higher volume streets. 
we have one area that is shown in green, that's a full reconstruction area. And then the two areas shown in yellow with the blue labels are our maintenance overlay areas. And uh, those are a little different and I'll explain why here on the next slide. So those two maintenance overlay areas were previously reconstructed with a specially assessed project by the city and they are not being assessed with this project. Therefore, they're not part of this public hearing for tonight. Um, but we do include them in the street improvement project due to the similar types of work and it's, uh, it's a little more efficient for our end of things. So. This year we have all three types of construction, so reconstruction, reclamation, and rehabilitation. The reconstruction is a full pavement replacement as well as full curb and gutter replacement. And then we also include uh, water main replacement with that as well. So that's typically areas that have a type of water main that we are looking to get replaced. Um, reclamation areas are full pavement reconstruction and um, just partial or spot curb, curb replacement. And then rehabilitation is also spot curb replacement, but we're just replacing the top layer of asphalt. So our project schedule is, is cyclical and we use a, a similar schedule every year. So the 2023 street improvement project actually started last February when we ordered the feasibility report and that initiated the preliminary engineering work for the project. Um, then come fall, this last fall, we had two open houses, one at Terrace Oaks and one here at City Hall, and we utilized the new uh, community engagement vehicle for that work. Um, then in December, the council accepted the preliminary report and ordered the public hearing for tonight. Uh, looking ahead, we are anticipating to receive plans, or sorry, receive bids in March and then we would tentatively be back here in April for the uh, assessment public hearing. Construction would take place May through October, at which point we would send out uh, a post-construction satisfaction survey for all the residents and businesses that were uh, along or adjacent to the road work. And then with that uh, satisfaction survey, we also remind everyone that's being assessed of the November 15th assessment due date. Oh, and one thing to note is that the um, letters and notices for the public hearing tonight were mailed and published in, in January. So here's a look at one of our areas. This is a rehabilitation. So we'll be replacing the top layer of asphalt here. This is Nicollet Avenue, um, kind of by the new Starbucks and Taco John's there. So as you can see, that, that pavement is failing and, and uh, in, need of, in need of some work. This is Grand Avenue near the new apartment buildings. Um, similar scenario, the pavement's failing and uh, we're proposing a rehabilitation on this section as well. <clears throat> this is the Marson Hill area. This is a residential area um, yeah. again, pretty bad, pretty bad pavement conditions and some drainage issues that are, that are relevant in this picture. Uh, this area is getting a reclamation, so full pavement replacement in addition to the spot curb replacement. Countrywood Estates is our full reconstruction area. So again, poor pavement condition, uh, it'll be getting full curb replacement as well as, uh, a portion of it is getting the water main replaced. This is the Villaburn area, uh, kind of a broken record here, bad pavement, drainage issues, and uh, we're proposing a, a reclamation in this area as well. So <clears throat> with our multimodal plan, it identified an off-street trail along Nicollet Avenue, which is shown here. That'd be a 10 foot wide trail on the east side of Nicollet Avenue. And that will fill in a gap between the trail that we have on Nicollet Avenue, north of McAndrews Road, and then the trail network that exists on County Road 42 and the existing trail network on McAndrews Road. And you can also see there on the, on the right hand side, the on-street bike lanes that we constructed last year. 
Again, our multimodal plan identified a trail gap between County Road 42 and South Cross Drive on Grand Avenue. So this one is gonna be on the west side of Grand Avenue and it's another 10 foot wide off street trail. During our complete streets review, we also found an opportunity to extend some sidewalk to the businesses in this area that currently don't have any uh, pedestrian access to them. So we've, um, we heard from our traffic committee that, we, that they've observed people walking in the street in this area. So it made sense and was, it was uh, deemed feasible. So those, are, those are the proposed six foot sidewalks there on Grand Avenue West of Nicollet Avenue. These are all of our funding sources for the project. So we use taxes, which are paid for by the Infrastructure Trust Fund, or sorry, pay for the project via the Infrastructure Trust Fund. Uh, we use special assessments, our utility funds, which are water, sewer, storm, and street lighting. And then our other sources of funding include our state aid funding. This is an overview of kind of how our special assessments are utilized. Um, a few years ago, council approved a change to assess single family homes on a per unit rate instead of by front footage. Uh, every other land use type is still assessed based on a front footage. Um, and the, the amount of assessments is based on 40% of the street costs. And we use a three, three year running average of cost for that assessment amount. And on the 60%, it's the rest of the residents and businesses of Burnsville who pay for that. Yep, yep, that's correct. So the benefiting property owners are only paying 40%. Yep, at a maximum. And so they get us, oh, their bill is only a fraction of that 40%. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Here's a look at uh, our assessment rates, our proposed assessment rates for the 2023 street improvements. So we have, for our reconstruction areas, single family homes, that's a $4,700 assessment. For reclamation, which is the kind of the majority of our residential areas, is a $2,500 assessment approximately. And then our rehabilitation is around $1,800 per single family home. Um, with the assessments, they can be prepaid in full by November 15th of 2023, or they can be uh, repaid over a set number of years, depending on the amount of the assessment, um, and that's shown here. And also the uh, interest rate for our 2023 assessments is 5.5%. Here's a look at some of our neighboring cities that assess and, and don't assess for similar types of work. So our, our last year's reclaim cost is, is shown there at, at around $2,000. Um, and you can see we're, we're on the lower end of, of most cities as far as our assessment rates for the same type of work. Here's our total cost uh, breakdown by funding source. So. <clears throat> We've got around 17% of the project is, or approximately $1.9 million is our water and sewer utility funds. So that's a little higher than, than past years due to additional water main replacement this year. 11% um, or around $1.3 million of the 11.3 total cost is for special assessments or is, is paid for by special assessments. Um, and then we have around $4.3 million of, of ITF, which is that general tax fund. Um, and then $3.3 million coming from our state aid funds and around $500,000 from our stormwater utility funds. With, uh, with all the communication that we send out any letters that we have and any uh, correspondence that we have with residents and businesses. We encourage them to go to our website and sign up for our weekly updates. Uh, those weekly updates start once, once our uh, contractor is on board and we have a schedule. We start notifying everyone via email or text or however, however they sign up for, 
for ease of getting information out there. Um, and then we also have our two email handles that go to multiple staff members so that we can be reached at, at any point with questions. And then um, also on our website, not, not shown here, but our inspector's cell phone numbers are also included on the website. So if there is ever a, a more urgent issue occurring with the construction, we, they can get a hold of somebody right away. Um, with that, we, with our correspondence, we also ask residents and business owners and anyone else that's going to be impacted by the construction to notify us of um, any spe spe special circumstances, really. So irrigation or invisible dog fences near the curb. Um, if they're looking to replace their driveway, uh, it's good to coordinate that work. Any drainage problems that, that they may have observed in their neighborhood. Um, any sewer or water service issues that they've had in the past. Um, disabilities or uh, medical needs um, or any special events that they have planned for the summer so that we can coordinate and, and be a good partner. So tonight is a public hearing. Staff recommends the to adopt the resolution ordering the improvements and ordering advertisements for bids for the 2023 street improvement projects. And then uh, just one thing to note, since, since sending out the public hearing notices, the only email or response that we received since is, is an email that was shared with you all already. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, very good. And Mr. Velocity, just for everybody's information, tonight is only about uh, ordering the improvements and to approve the plans and specifications and then order the advertisement for bids. And, uh, and then the 2023 street program then continues to move on. So I want everyone to know that with every action, uh, Mr. Velocity will be before us. You will all be notified. But the assessments don't happen until uh, April or May. Am I correct? Madam In Mayor, you are correct, yes. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, are there uh, questions for Mr. Velocity? Uh, Council Member Workman. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, good presentation. I'm just wondering <clears throat> if there was any further discussion about the intersection at Grand and Nicollet. Um, that's probably my least favorite intersection in the entire city. <laughs> it's about eight lanes of traffic. Um, I know we haven't really called it out by name, but since we're here, was there any discussion about that intersection in any capacity as far as safety is concerned? Yeah, Council Member Workman, uh, we did review that intersection both internally with engineering staff and traffic committee members as well. Um, I agree, it's it's not a great intersection, but there wasn't anything that was feasible with this project to, to significantly change that intersection. So the turn lanes and islands and that will essentially just stay the same. There's no reworking of any of that. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Council Member Keeley. Uh, question on the road repair on Grand Avenue. When was the last time that street had any repairs where it was assessed to the property owners? Councilmember Keeley, thank you for the question. As far as I'm aware, there has never been anything done to that road that was <coughs> assessed to the adjacent property owners. It was constructed in 1987, and it was a, a MnDOT-owned road. It was a frontage road. So it, it was just recently turned back to us in the last 15 years, I want to say. So. so this will be the first assessment that any property owner on that road would have mm -hmm. seen mm -hmm. since that road went in. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, to the... To, in response to the person who, uh, the concerned property owner who sent uh, the email in questioning the impact of the Grand Avenue apartments that are being built and uh, the ones that are already built. Um, I'm curious, how much would be assessed to the property owner, the land owner of the apartment, um, and this particular concerned person um, today Roughly, what is it, and what would it have been if those apartments were not built and it was still vacant land? The assessment would not change based on what is adjacent to any particular property. So, so the their perception that it's the users, right, the heavy users of a large apartment complex, does not impact how the assessments are made. That's correct. And would you mind just for the 
sake of the audience and the record, explain how um, the state statute 429 works? Yes, so the, the state statute that allows us to specially assess for street improvements and other projects of this nature is based on the value provided to the property. So it's not based on traffic or other factors. The, the amount that you assess is based on uh, the value of the improvement that you're making with the assessed project. And it's based on? And the benefits of the property. Sure. And, and the assessment is based on uh, linear footage of property ownership that abuts the street? That's correct. Our special assessment policy uses front footage for commercial and, and multifamily. Um, so yes, it's, it's based on a, the adjacent footage, uh, 30 feet setback from the right of way. As we bring more dense developments on streets like that, I'm curious as a council if we should, or if we could even, have a future discussion about how these assessments go when you have circumstances like this particular one where you have this extremely large, high, dense apartment complex and another one going in on a road that has um, a couple of smaller commercial buildings with very few users. <clears throat> and how lopsided that looks, right? And it doesn't necessarily fit, per se, um, most other circumstances of, of how 429 is applied. So it's, it, it might be one of the most unusual circumstances we have on a stretch of road that we just took over in recent years that, that is going to have this dramatic usage variant of, of, of people who have property ownership on that road. Um, I'm trying, I was trying to think today going through my through the city if we got any other circumstance like that but I don't even know if we can deviate or how much we can deviate I mean obviously we've adjusted our our policy with regard to residential which I think was a great move um, which leads into my next question um, but we can we can have that discussion for um, street assessments with residential for clarification does our new per lot assessment a f um, change the corner lot folks that are on, mm -hmm. let's say on a corner of a cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. they're still mm -hmm. only charged for one lot? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So that, that cured a lot yeah. of, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. challenges, you know, for mm -hmm. trying to be fair and equitable to everybody because most of the folks over the last now 17 cycles that I've witnessed who live on corner lots in some cases had roads on three sides because they were... Um, a front and back and a side road, and, and it was really difficult to sit there and say, you're on a corner lot, so you have to pay more. Um, it never made sense to me. I'm glad we changed it. I think there's a circumstance created on Grand Avenue that is challenging the fairness question again, much like that one did. So that's why I want to talk about it. Um, and then just a, a really a final statement to, to the viewers. Um, I have advocated in the past, I want to be one of those cities on that list that doesn't assess for streets because we're getting so close that I, I wish we could find a way to just get it off like, as those cities did. And, and we've had some discussions of different options and how we might phase it in over time. But I surely don't want to live in Plymouth or Edina because I think if I was a resident there and I was looking at 11, 13, whatever, $10,000 invoice to make my street nice, I would be saying, no, 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 the street's fine. Just keep patching it. Keep patching it. I don't, I don't want to. That's a, that's a big assessment, and it makes us look great because we're, for the same work, we're assessing 2,000. And I think that's a, we're in a great position. We're much more friendly when it comes to these types of things to our residents, even though it is still a shock to everybody to get a bill that they don't expect, even if it's two or 3,000. Comes out of nowhere. People, a lot of people in Burnsville are on fixed income, and these are still a shock to their budget. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we offer financing that makes it um, very palatable. It can stretch it out to be a handful, uh, you know, a few dollars a month over five years, a uh, type of thing. But it is still something that is. I, I would prefer that we, one day, as this council has heard me parrot this this narrative more than once over the last 17 years. I wish we could find a way to just get off assessments. And I would, I would rather deal with people filling up our audience saying, do my street, do my street, as opposed to why are you hitting me with this bill, right? So thank you. It's always a good discussion to have. This is an $11 million project. 
Do you know what the levy would be? It's got to be phased in over time. We don't need to talk about it now, Madam Mayor. No, thank you. But I mean, I, it all comes <laughs> down to who pays. <laughs> You know, it's 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 a great discussion to have. Well, well, we can have it again. But uh, yeah, all right. Is are there any other questions for Mr. Velocity? Okay. Thank you so much. Stay put. Don't move. Okay. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to address the council on this particular item that has to do with ordering the improvements for this project? Allen Drive. That, that is part of the project area, yep. Yes. Let's have him approach. Uh, can you come up to the podium right here, sir, and give us your name and address for the record? Uh, yes. Larson, 12321 Allen Drive in Burnsville. Yeah. I have Canelli Road on the back, yeah. and I had to pay for assessments for that, and then I have Allen Drive on the front. Uh, I, they used to have a policy where I thought we're okay, we got assessed for the bigger one and you only had to pay yeah. half of the yeah. of the smaller one. Did that change or? Yeah. Yes. I might have to defer to City Engineer Jen Desiree on this one. Yes. Uh, so the policy now is the side that you have your driveway on is the side you pay the assessment on. Yeah, and it's per unit. And it's per unit. Okay, so, I mean, I had to pay assessments for Canelli and my driveway is on Allen, so that means I'm getting hit twice or? I mean, we'd have to look at your, your assessment yeah. history and see, but the, the current policy, you know, in the past, you would have been assessed twice, once for each, each side. We changed the policy to be on the driveway side only. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we, I can get your information and, and connect yeah. with you after the meeting. That would be great, because yeah. I did get assessed on the uh, Canelli side mm -hmm. where my driveway yeah. isn't. Yeah, and, uh, so now I'm going to get hit again. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can talk already. to you and we can talk after the meeting. Hey, thank, thank you. you. you yeah. street, Anybody else? Yeah, come forward and give us your name and address for the record. I'm Teresa Voss, 55 Morrison Hill. I have more of a general question in how the interest rates, if you don't pay all at once, how are those determined over the 15 years? Is there a ceiling or, you know, how do you come up with that? I'm going to have uh, Ms. Desirud, our city engineer, address that question. And if you can also give uh, your... Uh, information, contact information, they can always help you with all of that. And 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 the interest rate is fixed, right? At 5.5. It it's fixed. At five it's and fixed. Said for two thousand for the next year. How about fifteen years? Everything. It's still fixed. That, that carries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's Thank fixed. You. Yeah. Anybody else? Seeing no one else, I will close the public hearing. Members of the council, your pleasure. I need four votes uh, to, aff um, to affirm the ordering of the improvements. Move to approve. Council Member Workman makes the motion. Second. Second by Council Member uh, Schultz. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And a motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, um, and thank you to all of you who are here for this hearing. Uh, there's more to come. And uh, Mr. Velocity and Ms. Desrud will be happy uh, to make sure that you get all the information. And I think um, Mr. Velocity also uh, identified where you can sign up and subscribe so that you can get all the information you need for all of the different uh, activities that's going on regarding the project. Okay. Thank Madam you. Mayor. Yes, Council Member Keeley. I would recommend that any uh, residents who experienced what the gentleman did who identified himself that just recently got assessed for one side come forward and let us know because I think we need to do something fair and equitable for those folks and not just say well our policy changed so now you're getting hit a second time too bad I don't think that's an adequate answer to this particular person and uh, I probably think, many others. Uh, yeah I think our staff will We'll uh, have a conversation and then we can go forth uh, depending on when Canelli Road was yep. done. I mean, we'll have to decide some cutoff, but I think we need yeah. to address those. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Lindbergh, I think maybe that's something that can be brought to a work session. If I, I know that uh, the schedule is filling up for these work sessions, but... Madam Mayor, I would look to the majority of the council to provide direction on that. Okay. Members of the council? 
Are you all in favor of uh, re-evaluating those uh, units, especially when we get information from from staff with regard to when Canelli Road was uh, reconstructed? I would be in favor of it, but I feel like there's going to be more than just Canelli Road. Um, yeah. And then how far back do we want to look? Five, 10, 15 years? Yeah. And that would be some of the direction I'd be looking we'd for right now. We'd have to discuss how that will affect the yeah. budget getting the work done because if we're not assessing, it's gonna, everybody else is going to pay for it. Yeah, and then those are, I think, some very important questions. There are data points that we have to look at, and there is always the, you know, the money issue that comes up with all of these things. I would suggest, I would suggest that we don't have to go back more than five years, and maybe it's three years, but I, I'm, I'm not suggesting anything longer than that, but I think the more recent ones are the ones that are more sensitive, <clears throat> and that may, uh, you know, present some opportunities for us to help them. Okay. Uh, council members, so we have clear direction for staff, and they know that there is a majority who would like to discuss this item with only looking back three years. At anyone that has already been assessed that could potentially be assessed a second time? Yeah. Yes. Those are the folks we're talking about. Okay. And it's just to have a discussion and then mm -hmm. decide on what it is. I'm, I'm interested in how many people that is. Yeah. It could be millions of dollars. I'm wondering how many households that could be that are abutting two roads. Madam Mayor? Yeah. Uh, being that I brought this up, uh, the solution could be just bring this back to work session to get the council's more specific direction that then that would allow me some time. Some of these questions are going to be staff intensive uh, to provide answers to. So I would, yeah, I don't, yeah. I want to be timely, uh, but I also want to set reasonable expectations as to not go back to our public works directors and others and um, no. receive information that I can't deliver on, on what you're asking. Yeah, for fair. Uh, City Manager Lindbergh. So I would, uh, I would so propose, Madam Mayor, that uh, we could potentially do that as soon as February just for an initial conversation. You can provide us with some direction and then we can okay. do our work and come back to you to... Council members. Okay. Yeah. You have yes. consensus. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we're here all night on Valentine's then. Day then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's not like your wife wants you home. She absolutely doesn't. You're she's correct about that. She, she's, she's bribing. 30, yeah. She's bribing. Yeah. Mine kind of does because I have a new home. baby. But it's That's right. This one needs... <laughs> <for> slave labor. <laughs> yeah. This one needs... Uh, Okay, we'll go on to the next item. The next item is to approve the 2023 Parks and Natural uh, Resources Work Plan. And presenting this evening for Parks and Natural Resources is the Chair of the Parks and Natural Resources Commission, uh, Mrs. Shannon Woolman. Mrs. Woolman. Thank you. Good evening, Council, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for having me here tonight to present our 2023 PNRC Work Plan. Um, our annual activities, this is ongoing every year. Um, I trust that you're all familiar with, with this. Um, so we're going to just kind of pass on through that one. I'm not going to go over that in details with you tonight. So moving on to our special projects. Um, our special projects are items that either staff, uh, commissioner, my fellow commissioners, or um, council members, or Madam Mayor, have requested that we provide a more in-depth review or discussion on. This year we have 15 projects scheduled for 2023. Um, last night, Caleb Ashling was able to join us and we knocked two off the list. We talked about Alamagnet Park Restoration Project and the Turf to Prey Project, which is on the next slide. On this slide, we have our multimodal plan update. Um, so we'll continue to get some information on that. Um, it's been kind of fun to see the progress go through already. Um, and the Amalgamate Park Restoration Project update, which we did discuss um, <coughs> last night as well. Um, of course, the pickleball courts, because who doesn't love a little bit of pickleball in Burnsville? Um, we're going to talk more this year about the Lake Marion Trail Get Project update and the Heart of the City Frameworks plan. Um, we also are going to cover the Center Village plan update, the Skate Park Ramp Replacement Project, Turf to Prairie Conver Conversion Projects update, which we covered last night. Um, it's <coughs> exciting to see that happen. Um, we would love to talk about pollinator lawn, dem lawn demonstration projects. And then the Emerald Ash Borer Disease Tree Management Update Plan. 
Yes. Okay. And then the enhanced playground replacement <laughs> projects. Um, we would like to learn more about Kramer Mining Landfill Update. This was on here last year as well, and we didn't quite get to it, so hopefully this year. Um, update on aquatic vegetation management, fisheries as it relates to water quality, and the update on the food forest. And do you have any questions that I can answer for you? Well, Mrs. Holman, you've got a, a very um, full agenda, 15 items. Is it going to keep you all busy? <laughs> uh, and that's a lot because, you know, these things, it's, you know, what is it that you're doing? And uh, how many of our residents are going to be impacted? Yeah. You know, getting to the pickleball uh, element. And then how much is all of this going to cost? Right. So all of you are having, you know, it just looks like, okay, yeah, we're going to take a look at uh, the park restoration and pickleball. But when you go in depth into all of that, it's going to be a lot more work. So my hope is that, you know, uh, I believe that um, we'll, we'll be patient with your progress on all of this and see where, how the needle, you know, yep. moves on, on all of that. Because, um, you know, you're, you're doing the skate park ramp replacement project also. Yeah, and I need to understand that a little bit more. Which ramps are we looking at? Um, I believe we're looking at the ones at Civic Center. Just, I believe, if I recall, um, JJ, I might need your help on that one because I kind of drawing a blank. Is that the ones that are aging a little bit and we need to do some restoration? Correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is the large spine ramp that continues. It's a metal ramp that continues to wear. Um, and we've resurfaced it a number of times already, and it's it's time for replacement on that. It just reaches its end of life. Okay, yeah. These are all the things that we have to do because these are all assets that belong to our residents, and uh, so we have to, you know, make sure that we take care of them. Absolutely. So that'll be interesting to see how you're all dealing with all of that. So, yeah. thank you. You're very um, welcome. Any other questions or comments for Mrs. Woolman? I think it's uh, very exciting. I remember at a time when our parks group didn't have 15 items to discuss, <laughs> and now <laughs> you're staying very busy, and that's very exciting. So It is. I think much to a GJ chagrin, because he came with just a very short, <laughs> and we're all like, nope. We all have a lot of things we want to accomplish this year, as we do every year, and it's just a matter of what can we get to, what's realistic. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll just see how the cookie crumbles. Yeah, because water quality is also a very <clears throat> complex issue. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Council Member Schultz. Uh, thank you very much. I was very pleased to see this presentation, and I'm excited to see what else comes um, from your group this year. Uh, and I would be remiss in not mentioning how fabulous your hair is this evening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, please extend our sincere uh, gratitude to the rest of the uh, commission Absolutely. members. And uh, thank you for your service to our community and for the work that you do each and every month um, to make sure that these items are reviewed and that you also give us some good recommendations as we move forward. So thank, thank you. you. May I have a motion to adopt the work plan for the PNRC, please? Uh, I will make that motion. Second. Uh, Councilmember Schultz makes the motion and second by, uh, was it Councilmember Keeley? Yes. Yes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And the motion carries. Thank you so much, Mrs. Woolman. The next item is to approve the uh, Planning Commission's work plan and presenting this evening is Chair of the Planning Commission, Mr. Chris John. Good evening and welcome. Oh, good evening, Madam Mayor, <coughs> Council Members, City Staff, and City of Burnsville. Uh, Chair Woolman set a bar really high in comparison. I'm just going to point that out right away. And uh, I want to. Your hair looks nice too, Chris. Well, thank you. I was hoping somebody was going to say that. Thank you. Thank you. I just did it yesterday. <laughs> uh, first, I want to introduce our team. We uh, what we don't uh, have in content, we bring back with pictures. Um, 
Yeah. From left to right, Commissioner Ali Awad, Commissioner Nick Anderson, Commissioner John Wallace, Commissioner Karen Braddock, and Commissioner Robert Timmerman, and yours truly, are um, working really hard to ensure that all our PUDs, CUPs, variances, and uh, zoning ordinances go through and are approved and are vested before coming to you. Hopefully, we've been doing a good job of that. Um, uh, as far as a work plan is concerned, we want to continue to implement the goals and strategies we had in 20, on the 2040 comprehensive plan. That mainly focuses on the center village vision. Uh, a lot of time, or in the past, we worked more on the Con Road 42. That kind of morphed into the center village vision. Uh, we do have some um, design work that's going to be coming for us uh, over this next year. Uh, we already met once with all the other commissions concerning the Aldrich um, Road um, extension that we've been looking at. Um, and we have had actually some buildings come through, and I know we have another one. We have an open hearing on it that's coming up next Tuesday, so tune in for that, those at home. It's 6.30 on Tuesday, or Monday, excuse me. And then uh, we also want to review the recommended changes to the Title 10 and Title 11 of the city code that is being brought forth by the uh, ordinance board that meets. Uh, they are pushing back a little bit on the timeline, uh, trying to get a good, good grasp on everything, make changes that make it more relevant and more readable for the general public. So as, um, as those recommendations come through, we will uh, take a look at them. We had one come through recently uh, concerning uh, roofing materials and um, foundations. I think that came through, I want to say April or May. It's all kind of a blur right now. Um, <clears throat> and we're also going to review recommend changes uh, as it relates to lower Minnesota River Watershed District. Um, there are uh, ordinances that are being a little bit more stringent that will be coming through. It's um, being passed through the Watershed District Board at this time, and uh, we will take a look at them as soon as they can. Uh, the pictures on this one are from our tour of the water treatment facility, and um, Mr. Tony Snow there is pointing out to, looks like John and I, that um, this is Burnsville here. We didn't know that. Something new. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> We got a great tour of the facility, learned a whole lot about the water treatment facility, how much work goes into that. Um, I think if, if you have the opportunity with elementary kids to get a tour of that, it, it's a fantastic, um, it's amazing how many tunnels and pipes that are underneath there. But you learn a lot about some of the ongoing processes within the city, and that's very important, especially as we sit as a board, trying to make recommendations for the city. So I've had a recent conversation with the city manager, Lindbergh, and we talked about doing more of those tours over the next year or so, or next couple of years. And I think that's gonna be a, a good priority or something that we'd like to do. Just get more training on, on some of the facilities within Burnsville, if that even includes the Kramer Mining Facility or uh, Center Point Energy, some of the facilities that usually don't get to, you know, access as a regular person. With that, those are my, um, my, our plan for the works, work plan for 2023. And I am recommending the city council adopt the 2023 work plan and I can stand for questions. Well, you know, you may have only five items that you're working on, but the comprehensive plan update is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still, I, I have that in hard copy at home, simply because I go back and take a look at it when pro projects come through and then I want to look at um, what that is. And so, yeah, and when you're doing work along the lower Minnesota River watershed, that's also very important work and it's a lot of work and it's not just, so this, you have a lot of cerebral work in all of those and of course, uh, County Road 42 and the redevelopment of the vision and the center village, you know, that's what uh, community development is also doing with regard for their deliverables. So I think those are some of the things that you all are going to work together on moving forward. So it, there are very complex uh, items that you have on your um, agenda. 
I appreciate that, Madam Mayor, especially yeah. the cerebral part. I don't usually get that compliment, so thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought that was uh, that's, I a, take it. that's a big compliment. It is. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate that. You know, and not too many people have the patience for doing a lot of that cerebral work. Yeah. But oh, it has it, to be done. It and it's, it's fun. It very yeah. much is a lot of fun. And it, it, like you said, it has to be done. Correct. Yeah. It has to be done. Yeah. Any other comments or? Yeah. Well, just pass on compliments. The, we rely on the Planning Commission in a big way, as you well know. And uh, the work is cerebral and dry at times, but you make it fun, and, and there's some good dialogue going on, and that's what we, what we hope for yeah. always, right? And uh, members of the commission to be engaged and, and take it seriously because it is serious work to the city. So thank you for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm very impressed by the team that we do have, so I appreciate you guys passing those guys along because they are fun and we are friends outside, you know, as much as we can be within the public yeah. hearings. But, uh, yeah, they're good people. No, you guys do good work because you all notice that what you bring to us is usually on a consent agenda, just like the brewery that you uh, just uh, right? brought forth. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, just now. looking at all of that and looking at your background and discussions that you guys had, that was really terrific. Thank and I, I understand that there's going to be some uh, projects, but we do, all don't know about it. It's just a lot of anecdotal information, you know, right. flying Rivers. around the city, but our staff, we don't have anything. So, you know, when those things become a reality through an application, you guys will have first eyes on it. Which it's a lot of fun to see the city grow up and some of those um, things that were just ideas yeah. at one point, especially when you talk about the buildings, there were ideas at one point and all of a sudden they're coming to fruition now yeah. and it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Can you share some of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you share uh, some of what's King? flying around the city that we're not aware of? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, well, you, know, we, it, it's it's not, are you talking drones or ideas? But <laughs> you hear a lot of anecdotal stuff going around the city about different restaurants and you say, hmm, or you get questions about it and uh, say, I don't know anything about it because I have, we haven't been informed that there is an application before us. Steak and Shake right now is yeah. a big one. I don't yeah, know. that's that's the really? one that's flying all around. Where? <laughs> we, nobody know. knows. Steak, steak and Ale, I hear about well. yeah. Steak and Ale, is that the one you're referring to? I'm yeah, Steak and Ale. Yeah. They're planning on opening this summer, but we don't know where. <laughs> and, and staff has not seen an application. So yeah. I always say, unless there's an application in City Hall, we know nothing. But great information. Lots of rumors. Yeah. Yeah. So well, thank you. Work. Thank you. Yeah, and please extend our sincere gratitude to the members of the Planning Commission and thank them for all the good work. You know, you guys do good work. and. your commission, right? goes on consent. Right. Thank you. May Thank I have you. a motion, please, to adopt the work plan? Uh, I will move to adopt. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. And a motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Economic Development Commission's work plan. And presenting this evening is Chair of the Economic Development Commission, Mrs. Crystal Fitchett, and uh, welcome. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members, Burnsville City staff, and others. I am going to be very short um, this evening, very brief, as I understand you all have had the background information, so I don't have to go over that with you this evening. But um, the Economic Development Commission um, will, we have four items to propose, uh, action items. And um, for 2023, we propose city, counts, uh, city code updates to continue to provide input on that. Um, Grow Minnesota, thank you. Grow Minnesota uh, City Chamber Partnership Review and Business Retention and Expansion Program to continue to review that and also the Economic Development Strategic Plan update. Ongoing initiatives will be the current uh, economic development strategic plan work, ribbon cuttings, training opportunities, open to business engagement, and recommendations on land sales, grants, and financial tools. And that is how brief it is tonight. <laughs> well, so. you may 
think it's a brief, but uh, you know, the Economic uh, Development Strategic Plan, I know is also on the work plan for a community development. So you all are going to be really reevaluating all of that and looking at what needs to be done. So I think, um, yeah. and your ongoing tasks, it, it, you may only have uh, four items that you're looking at, but they're items that uh, are very dense. Mm -hmm. And so, hold review. Yeah. yeah, that's a, a lot of it. And uh, you, a lot of engagement work as well. So, but uh, yeah, thank you for all the work that you all do. It's Absolutely. very important. And uh, I look forward to uh, the update on the uh, strategic plan. Yeah, that yeah. does take a lot of involvement and uh, conversation around the strategic plan. So very careful thinking on that and a lot of input does yeah. take. Yeah. So, and then you still have a lot of ongoing work too that's very dense. Yeah. 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 So the recommendation is that it's adopted this evening. Um, Pardon me? I said our, our commission recommends that you adopt the... Uh, Thank you. Please extend our today. gratitude to the commissioners as, as well. We appreciate the work that you do and and uh, the recommendations that you bring before us. You Members of the council, do you have any questions for Mrs. Fitchett? No, but thank you for all your hard work that you do for us and yeah, your professionalism. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all that you do and uh, everyone uh, and all of our commissions for their, for your service to the community. So members of the council, I need a motion to adopt um, the Economic Development Commission's work plan. Move to approve. Yeah. Second. There, there's a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And the motion carries. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank and you. have a good evening. The next item is to authorize a con contract qualification solicitation and uh, review and bidding process for the Kramer Quarry Reservoir deepening and water intake project phase one, bid package one. And presenting this evening is our, um, our, our public works director, uh, Ryan Peterson. Yes, Mr. Peterson. Uh, good, good evening. Thanks for letting me be here tonight to talk about this project. Um, so uh, the, the basic reason that we're here tonight on this one is because we're doing something a little atypical as it relates to uh, seeking out bids for um, a project we're doing. I'll get into that. Um, so the city and Kramer Mining have worked collaboratively for many years on surface water management. Um, as they've continued to mine deeper, they've uh, started to take some more of the water that we used to take. It's bypassing our sump. So the project that we'll be discussing will help us increase our rate of uh, water harvesting. And that should also be a win for Kramer because they will not have to pump as much water. And to, to deepen it, they will also get some more limestone that they can mine out and sell. So it should be a win-win project here. Uh, just to help people understand where we are, at, uh, this is the Kramer mine, 35W, 13. This is where uh, the city takes its water from. Uh, all the water that we do take from this area comes from the south. It's not influenced by landfills around. It's all coming from the south, and that is why it is, uh, continues to be a safe water source for us. Um, in particular, uh, we are the project location is right here on the, a sister company to Kramer Mining, known as Kramer North America. They uh, build bridges, and um, uh, that's here. I think I'll get into the next slide. So we have two phases of this project. Um, or in the, the first phase has two bid packages. Uh, the first one is to drill some holes vertically and horizontally so that we are able to um, get a future improvement in how much water we can take. Um, and the trick to this one is we're going to be drilling down about 140 feet and then over 200 feet, and they got to hit within one foot of each other. So that's very tricky technical work, high risk stuff. So um, that's the complexity and why we're proposing something different in this one. Uh, so what I was talking about is they'd be mining down here on Kramer North America property, and then they'd uh, drill over uh, horizontally to match that. And then in the future, we'd build a well house or a pump house on top of that 
and a system that we could take water in from here into, in the future. That'd be the bid package too. So um, uh, briefly, so this is uh, what I was talking about. This is a cross section looking into the limestone. They will be drilling down 140 feet from elevation 720 down to 580. And this is typical well stuff. There are plenty of contractors who can do that. The trick is then um, drilling a hole horizontally over and matching. And if these two don't match up, then we can't get the water from, from the uh, sump area up to the wellhouse and to our treatment plant. Um, so uh, what we're proposing to do is that we would, instead of just going straight to contractors, we would solicit qualifications. <laughs> We'd be using very objective criteria for this. We wouldn't, um, it, it'd be something that any contractor can meet if they know what they're doing. Um, and then once we have those qualifications and contractor qualified, then we'd supply them plans and specs oh, that they could that? bid on. Um, and then we'd bring those bids back to you for consideration. And um, we're hoping this can all be done by the second meeting in March, where we <coughs> consider uh, bringing forth the contract approval um, assessment agreement with Kramer Mining as uh, agreements with them would pay for all these improvements, along with an easement that we'd have to build the future well house on top of it. So from a financial standpoint, uh, this is phase one of those improvements. The 20, uh, 2022 CFP had $1.8 million for that. Uh, we're, we're certainly hopeful that this uh, bid package is under that. What we do is move forward with a budget amendment to move that, that funding to 2023. And then it's likely that um, bid package two would be in 2024. Uh, this will not have a significant impact to the water and sewer fund because it is being um, paid for by Kramer Mining. Um, let's see here. Um, and then the second phase of this project is expected to um, be done in 2027 timeframe uh, after we make some other improvements down there collaboratively with, with Kramer Mining. So with that, that is my presentation. What I'm looking for is to move forward, uh, authorizing us to enter in or go through a contractor solicitation process as opposed to just going to our typical approving plans and specifications. Councilmember Keeley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a quick question. How large is the diameter of those drill holes that have to be within one foot of one another? Uh, they're both about three feet in diameter. That's a pretty good size hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got to put a big pipe down there because we're taking hundreds, if not thousands, of gallons a minute right. uh, through those in, into the future. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, I support it. You're looking for a recommendation to support the... Uh, um, contractor qualification solicitation process, right? Yeah. Thank you. Councilmember Workman. Thank you, and thanks, Ryan. Um, just while we're on the topic of water, and it's something that we're going to be talking about a lot this year, um, a project like this has the potential to help with some water quality issues since we're digging deeper. I know there's no, you're not going to make any assurances or guarantees of that, but in theory, this could help address some of those water, not quality, taste issues, um, just with algae blooms and such. Yeah, Councilman Workman, thanks for the question. Yes, uh, what we'd expect is that there, the water now is about 20 feet deep. When we're done 20, 28-ish, it'd be about 30 feet deep. So there'd be less chance to be impacted by algaes and stuff at the top of the surface. So uh, likely an improvement in water quality. Unfortunately, that won't be yeah. a near-term deal, but um, hopefully in the 2020s, Progress. we could see some improvements. Okay. Thank you. Because one of the things, um, Mr. Peterson, is once we harvest that water from the surface water treatment side, it still has to be commingled with the groundwater. And when they're commingled is when you add all of the um, chemicals to the water, right? So, Madam Mayor, we, we treat both surface water and groundwater first, and then we have a finished product of each type, and then we send them together to commingle before sending them out. Yeah. Because there's different minerals that come from the ground and that they go into the, the main water treatment plant. When it comes from all the wells. Yes, there's one building with two separate yeah. treatment processes. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for Mr. Peterson? 
If not, may I have a motion, please, to uh, authorize a contract, a qualification, solicitation, and review? So moved. There's a motion. Second. There's a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And a motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. Yeah. The next item is the ordinance adopting revisions to the city code, uh, Title III, Chapter 29 through 32. This is a continued item from January 17th. Presenting this evening is uh, Mrs. Uh, Michelle Collins, our city clerk. Mrs. Collins. Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council. Um, if you remember back a couple weeks ago, we did have this ordinance before us at the January 17th City Council meeting. There was a couple of items that the council asked us to go back and look at, and I have those up on the screen for you now. Under 3-30-7, we were looking at subdivision C that um, had known facilities for restrooms. Uh, staff did take a look at that and recommended that be removed on, under subdivision H. Um, regarding having the mobile vending vehicles in residential areas. Um, we took a look at that and added that they need only that they couldn't be there if they were longer than 22 feet. Now this is consistent with our zoning ordinance as well. Okay. <clears throat> Under subdivision I, um, we, uh, we noticed uh, that it did not have the exceptions for special events where the um, customer window access did not have to be facing the curb. So um, staff looked at that and agreed that it was good to add that exception in there. And the same for subdivision J, also added in there that during special events, the electrical cords and hookups were allowed because as long as they were well marked and documented. Okay. I stand for any questions. The ordinance tonight uh, requires a simple majority of the council to um, adopt, however, the uh, summary ordinance requires four votes four. of okay. the council. Okay. Uh, members of the council, any questions for the update and the uh, improvements to the work that staff has uh, put forward? Yes. I don't, I don't have a question. Uh, I just want to say, as liaison to this group, our citizens work really hard on this one, and there was a lot of discussion on this and very thoughtful discussion, and they're, they're making it... I, would, uh, I wouldn't say easy to do business in Burnsville, but they're making it easier to do Burns, in Biz, Burnsville if you're a food truck, and, which I think is good because yeah. they're not going away. They're, they're, here, they're here to stay now. And, yeah. So to that, to that citizens group, nice job. Okay. So let me ask the council, is, uh, I, I need three, and, two, three and, uh, and four votes. Is there any concerns, or can I bundle this? I think you can bundle it, in my bundle opinion. It. Okay. Then I will bundle it, and may I have a motion to uh, to approve the uh, the ordinance? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Mayor and Council, that is a motion to approve summary publication of the ordinance as well. Yeah, it's okay. bundled. Okay. Yes, it's bundled. Yes. And uh, so I had asked the question, and there were no concerns. So I said, if I can bundle it, they said yes. Okay. So it's bundled. So this is this motion is uh, it's to approve the um, revisions to the uh, code. So there's a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And a motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, members of the council, there are no other items to come before us this evening, and a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And a motion carries. Good night, and thank you for being with us.